The Master can be a puzzling film, but it makes sense to examine it within its context. This is a 1946 documentary about World War II veterans returning home, emotionally traumatized from combat. Anderson has declared this film's influence on the master. Lancaster Dodd makes the promise of spiritual health to his followers in Anderson's film, but there is an even bigger influence to Dodd's character. Man poses a great many problems, and he is so varied from culture to culture, from type to type, race to race. Master is the nickname for the character Philip Seymour Hoffman plays, whom is famously based on L. Ron Hubbard. I discovered... And discovered... We're desperately trying to help man. If we are not helping him... And the aim and goal of Scientology is to take an individual or a group, and by taking the individuals in the group, put them in a position where they can confront their own problems and solve their own problems and so bring themselves up by their own bootstraps. Anderson's vision of America in the early 1950s reflects the disillusionment of returning soldiers and also the blatant hucksterism of sham faiths that target vulnerable individuals. But when we say he is a spirit of infinite capability and then we try to improve that capability, in that way we win and we win very, very, very uh, profitably, very easily. Thematic influences on Anderson's film include The Seventh Victim, an ominous film about a shadowy cult that even predates Scientology. The heroine of that film risks death, but the horror in The Master is not fear of death, but fear of losing oneself. Ah! What I just experienced, was that me? Nightmare Alley has also been cited by Paul Thomas Anderson as an influence on the master. In this 1947 film, the main character must flee after he accidentally gives an alcoholic deadly wood polish to drink. In The Master, the impetus for Freddy Quell to discover Lancaster Dodd is that Quell is running away when a man dies from drinking one of the alcoholic concoctions that Quell makes. Like Tarantino, Wes Anderson, and other obsessive cinephile directors, Paul Thomas Anderson watches a lot of older films, and therefore his style is praised as original, when in fact he often draws inspiration from more obscure films. But the fact that he is able to synthesize all these different influences into a penetrating and utterly contemporary film is a testament to his instincts as a director. In the computer age, when filmmakers have the entire canon of movie culture at their fingertips, a great director will repurpose, remix, and reinterpret that movie history to suit their message. Anderson brought his narrative about the relationship of two men into a database of other influences that relate in some way to his vision. Anderson's mind is wired in such a way that he can see these various story elements and organize them into a whole. This method of filmmaking is like gathering inspiration piece by piece while assembling a puzzle. The takeaway is that one cannot fully appreciate, comprehend, or learn from the master until one has seen where its influences are felt. more traditional than uh, most philosophies. Now when you get uh, most modern uh, renditions and so forth. He's making all this up as he goes along. You don't see that? Why is it important to point out these influences? Because serious art needs to be examined within its context. It says here on your record from overseas that uh, you had headaches and that you had crying spells. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe in your profession, it's called nostalgia. It says here you had a severe headache and a crying spell. 
Very suffered, but in you, in your profession, you call nostalgia. <laughs> Does this diminish the originality of Anderson's vision? Not at all. The master is now in dialogue with all those older films that served as inspiration. This montage of troubled faces is accompanied by the same dialogue in both films. The army psychiatrist is trying to inspire the veterans to go back to their old lives and make something of themselves. Anderson has such a sharp ear for natural dialogue that he knew he did not need to transform those real phrases. He used them verbatim. Paul Thomas Anderson admits he stole left, right, and center from Let There Be Light when writing The Master. But it's not stealing the way a comedian steals jokes. Visual literacy is a phenomenon, and we often quote other works without even realizing it. Paul Thomas Anderson is upfront about where he drew inspiration for this, arguably his greatest film. By seeing what he thought was important about those movies, it enriches our perception of the film he ultimately created. Well, man has, uh, man has conceived man to be a spirit for many more years than he has conceived man to be uh, an animal. <laughs>